Good afternoon, everybody. Our webinar will begin in just a minute as we wait for a few more people to join us. Uh, in the meantime, I do want to let you know that this webinar will be recorded. So if you miss any of it, uh, you can always go back through the, the link that you were emailed and listen to it on demand. Uh, stand by for just a minute as we wait for a few more people to join us. Okay, just one more housekeeping uh, point of order. If you look at your Zoom toolbar uh, at the bottom, maybe at the top of your screen, depending on your configuration, you'll see a Q&A feature. I'll go ahead and open that up if you would. We would really appreciate you asking any questions you may have during the webinar. We have experts on hand to answer them. And um, if we don't get to them during the webinar, we'll answer them during the live Q&A in the last uh, 10 minutes or so of the webinar. Uh, but with that, let me introduce our speaker today. Um, Andre Perot is from Lerma Agency. He is Interstate Batteries, or that is Interstate Batteries uh, Agency of Record. And as Interstate Batteries is always trying to have a, a measurable impact on our customer's business, our dealer's business, uh, one way we do that is through these pro clinic webinars where you can sign up, you can get free battery training, for your technicians. We also do things like this where we talk about ways to improve your business and specifically your online uh, searches. So SEO 101, how do your customers find you and what do they do next? Um, this is just trying to bring more customers from the internet into your shop. Um, my name is Kyle Friedel with Interstate and um, I have the privilege of getting to ask the really dumb questions on this. But like I mentioned, you can ask those, you can ask smarter questions or dumb questions too. Just use that Q&A feature. Andre, thank you for joining us today. My pleasure, Kyle. Cool. And uh, just as a reminder, we are also going to have another uh, webinar on Thursday, also on digital best practices. This, uh, this one would be improving your, your website. And if you would like to have your site optimized by Andre, and maybe even including a live walkthrough on Thursday's webinar, just go to the Q&A and enter your web address in there. And we'll, we'll uh, look at that and see where we can make recommendations to help you improve your, your search results there. So with that, Andre, if you have nothing else, do you wanna take it from here? Sounds good, thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, what I'll be covering today is really exploring the ways uh, so that we can get a deeper understanding of how your consumers or your clients are finding you. And once they do, what are they doing on your website? Let's dive in. So before I go into the specific details, I'm just gonna kind of quickly recap um, so that everybody's on the same page and understands the difference between organic versus paid search ads. So I did earlier today, a Google search for Mazda 5 2012 car battery. That's the model I have. So, uh, and here's the search results that Google provided. At the top of the page, you'll see that we've got a couple of paid search ads. Typically you'll find two to four ads on the top of these search results. There's our paid search ads right there. Below that, you're gonna find your organic results. Those below that are organic listings are what you earn. In other words, you don't have to pay for that. It's based on a multitude of metrics and Google sorts and classifies and will rank websites based on how well they perform and what kind of content they have and so on and so forth. We'll get into a little bit more details of that. So that's the organic results. Further down the page, they have some additional um, results, uh, some specific called RIT snippets. These are basically enhanced search features. In this case, they have a, a RIT snippet called people also ask. So they're basically the frequently asked questions that the general public will search for specifically in Google. Uh, so it gives you a good insight as to the type of information that people are looking for or what they expect to find in a search page. Below that, we've got a little bit uh, more organic results. And here's another rich snippet. This one, this time is a featured video snippet where basically they'll highlight one video that's 
uh, has some pretty good information. And they even have a timeline, so you can actually scroll to specific details on this case, how to remove the battery cover, the master cylinders, a whole bunch of information, well cued with markers to decide what point you want to watch that particular video. Great information. All of these are organic results. And the last one below, another paid ad at the bottom of the page. And so generally, there'll be anywhere from one to three paid ads at the bottom of the page. So with that in mind, today what I'm going to cover is a couple of tools you can use to understand how people are finding your website, how they're discovering you in those organic results, what search terms, what pages they're going to, how often. And that's done through Google Search Council. We're also going to look at once they find you and they click on the search results and are on your website, what are they doing there? So we're going to look at, are they engaging with, uh, with your content? Are they staying a long time? Are they finding what they want? Uh, and then to close up for today's session, we're going to allow you to ask us a few questions, what you'd like to know as well through our Q&A. All right, let's begin by taking a look at Google Search Council. So this is really all about understanding how people are finding your website. It is also the uh, only way that you can actually communicate with Google and vice versa. There is no rep or email or phone number that you can call Google and say, hey, there's something wrong with my listing. It's just not out there. Even if you have an $800 million ad budget, they still won't talk to you. Google is kept very hush-hush in terms of the algorithms and there is no representation. Just this one, Google Search Council is the only rep you have. So it's really worthwhile to creating and establish that relationship through this digital channel between your shop and Google. To do so, it is fairly straightforward. I say fairly, it's Google. It's never gonna be that easy, um, but we will share this link later on. It makes it, you can also Google this. You can Google, um, Search Council, and the very first result will be, of course, Search Council by Google, or you can type it in search.google.com forward slash search dash console. We'll take you there. To the right is the page you can land on, basically Google Search Council. It will tell you a little bit more about it. And to begin, just simply click on the start button, and that'll begin your journey. With all things Google, you will need a Google uh, Gmail account to be able to log in and create an account. Don't worry, if you don't have one right now, you can actually create one right then and there. It's very simple to create a Gmail account. You can create a whole bunch if you like. Um, it doesn't cost anything. Uh, very seamless and painless to create an account. So we're going to assume today that you already have a Gmail account and you can sign in. The moment you sign in with your username and password, it will take you directly into Google Search Council. Now, if you don't have any properties verified, uh, you will only see this particular screen here. If you already have properties, it'll prompt you if you want to add any additional ones. Now, I manage uh, several uh, Search Council properties, so uh, there's a couple on this particular profile. So then you simply click on verify your ownership, and then it's going to ask you for a little bit more information. You have a couple of options here to verify your domain. You can do what's called through the uh, across all domains. So you'd want to select that if, let's say, you're using subdomains. Maybe you have products dot shop.com or maybe you have careers. If you're using a subdomain of any type or you have multiple uh, sites like that, you'll want to set up your verification this way. If you so, just have a single website, go ahead. I was just going to ask, so domain is my main website? Yes, that's domain good Domain is a, like a page within it? So, uh, a page is a page, yeah. So a subdomain is anything where you have a prefix like um, uh, it might be shop.mydomain.com or it might be careers. It's anything with before your domain name creates Why would a subdomain. You have that? A lot of times companies will use it like for careers or they might have their, uh, their, their products through mm -hmm. a product subdomain right. or you might do kind of a, an outside part like hospitals, for example, quite mm -hmm. often will do gifts.hospitalname.com because right. it's, Sometimes it can have a completely different look than a hospital. And it is treated by Google as a separate website. But if you want to look at all of those, you'd use this verification process. So like if That's you good created question. your website through WordPress and you have the free version, it might say WordPress dot domain. Yes, name. exactly. That would be technically a subdomain. 
okay. uh, for that. Uh, most people are going to use this one, which is just a URL prefix. You'll just copy paste the URL from your existing website into here and click on continue. That's the easiest approach right here on the second one. Most people do that one. Once you click on that option, it will give you uh, ways to verify. The reason they want you to verify your domain, because you can imagine that you can do a lot of damage if you control somebody else's website. You could literally turn off your website uh, never have, and so you can do a lot of damage. So you do have to go through a couple of hoops here, and this is to protect your business. Uh, in order to do that, there's multiple methods um, to verify it. So the first one they recommend is you upload an HTML file. Nobody's going to see it; it's just a blank file with some basic code. Uh, my preferred way is using an HTML tag, and I'll show you that one in a quick second. Uh, it tends, I find it to be the easiest. What it'll do, it'll say, hey, copy this code and paste it on your website. So if you have like a WordPress site, and you've got a developer that's pretty good. It's, it's actually just a cut and paste and that'll uh, take care of the verification. So if you copy this, and again, if you haven't, uh, you know, if you know how to do it yourself, great. If you don't, uh, check with your developer, whoever built your website can help you with that. And then once you've had it applied, you can then do the final step, the verification step. So come back to it after the uh, developer has confirmed they've added the tag to your homepage in the head section of the website. So again, maybe pass this information on to them uh, if they're not fit. Most web designers know how to do this these days. Once they've got it applied, click verify. Once it's um, confirmed, you will then have access to all the information available that Google is tracking. Generally speaking, it'll take about 48 hours before the information is gonna propagate and that you'll have uh, your visible data in front of you. Now data um, that is available uh, for Search Council is kind of interesting because Google has been tracking your website forever. They're just granting you access to see it. Uh, so typically at, at, after a couple of days, you'll have some historical data up to 16 months in the past to take a look at as well. So it's kind of handy. So even if you're new to it, you're gonna have some good insights once um, your, that 48 hour period has elapsed. So it's, it's a pretty good tool. So now once you're in, there's many places to take a look at. We're gonna drill down in some of these to get the, uh, the best features of this one. Let's begin with coverage, which is just down a little bit here. You should always take a look at your coverage at least once a month, and here's why. This is Google telling you if there are some pages it just can't read, or it's just going to tell you if there's any that have some technical issues they're kind of like so so about maybe they're uh, not uh, fully understanding it, or maybe the whole site is or that page isn't quite visible. Uh, it'll tell you that. It's also going to tell you how many are valid. So, in other words, no issues, it can read it, index it, catalog it, all good. And it'll also tell you if it, it excluded any pages. And Having pages excluded is not necessarily a bad thing, or can be. You'd have to look at it. Let me give you a scenario for that. So quite often, this really applies to e-commerce stores. So when you create an item, let's say a shirt, and you've got maybe 12 different sizes for that shirt, those are called variations or variables. Well, ideally, you just want the shirt itself cataloged. All the various sizes aren't that important, but unfortunately it's gonna create 12 other pages. Then you got the colors. So let's say if you had six different colors, you're gonna create a lot of extra pages, but really it's just one shirt. Think of it, same thing. You might have uh, a uh, parts or nuts and bolts, whatever the case may be, again, that are really identical apart from size variation. So again, you wanna just uh, take a look at it, make sure it's not skipping anything. Uh, which would certainly be a problem. But generally speaking, uh, it's legitimate. Any questions there so far? That's kind of a, a lofty one to grasp a little bit. But bottom line is look for this. Make sure you don't have any errors. If you have a high number here, you want to talk to your developers and troubleshoot why Google can't see these pages. This is like the multi-point inspection for your website. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a really good analogy. So you know, if you're reporting back, it's like, oh, there's an error. This must be fixed. It's telling you if there's warnings that it's okay, you can probably live with it a little bit. It may hinder your, your visibility a little bit. That's exact. That's a really good analogy, Tom. Thank you. All right, let's move on. Here's another one as well, is that it's also going to tell you user experience information. That's 
another great area. Most websites now are what's called on the mo mobile index. In other words, it's going to rank you based on how well your mobile version of your website appears to the general public. And it's gonna tell you if there are any issues. So this is pretty handy. So this website doesn't have any right now, it used to. It had some text that was too small to read. Like if you've ever visited a website, you're like, oh my God, I can't read that. Well, you're not the only one. And in fact, Google has some of this information here. So you can go ahead and fix those. And again, let your developer, hey, listen, this type is way too small, get that fixed. Or uh, that you've got clickable elements that are too close together. Well, that's really kind of important as well. Cause sometimes, um, you know, the links, are you can't actually click on the correct one. It can be very frustrating for users. So you wanna make sure that gets corrected as well. There's another reason you wanna get it corrected. Google kind of penalizes you when it sees these type of uh, issues on your web page, And consequently, you may not appear uh, on the best performing pages. Ideally, our goal when we work with any of our clients, we're trying to get you in the first page of Google results, at least on the second page, um, uh, you know, get you up there so that you appear more often in front of more people, which translates to more uh, visitors and phone calls to your shop, ideally. All right, the next one, a site now. This is optional, uh, but if you have a pretty large website, I highly recommend it. Uh, this is basically a list of all your pages so that Google doesn't accidentally miss any. So basically you're saying visit these particular pages. It also guides them if there's any pages you don't want to be included. You might have some checkout pages or maybe you've got uh, some pages that are basically for just employees really. They're just like, here's your benefit packages, things like that. You could also deliberately skip those. And so Google won't go and visit those pages and they won't appear in search results. That's what a sitemap is. Any questions so far on that? No, and just you know, a reminder for everybody, please put your any questions in the Q&A. We have people standing by to answer them. So far, we haven't seen any, but um, don't be shy. Please let us know. I know, personally, this is, uh, for me, this is not easy. So uh, feel free to ask, ask away. Um, and this is all, you know, about helping you show up in those searches without having to pay for it. Exactly. The paid search. All right, this is probably the most interesting portion. And uh, as part of our Q&A later, we're gonna go into a live demo so we can kind of explore this together a little bit more performance. This shows you how you're doing in search results. So um, basically how many clicks were generated over the last three months. You can set different time frames. You can look back as far back as 16 months. So you can see how you did uh, April last year, for example, compared to this particular time frame. You can see, whoop, leaning up on the keyboard, you can also see how often you appeared in search results for any given query, a really nice feature. Uh, it also gives you some additional metrics for your average click-through rate, your average position. Uh, down below here, you'll see there's queries. It can tell you how what search term people use to actually find you. Uh, great information. Uh, overall, and we're going to dig much deeper into that very shortly. All right, so overall, uh, the Search Council, you can relax. If there are any issues, I mentioned errors, if any new ones come up suddenly or suddenly there's things break, Google is going to send you an email to whatever email you used to set up. So you don't have to watch it day to day. That's not the point of it. If there is an issue, you're going to get an email read those emails, take a look at the issues. There'll be some alerts. You can go and fix it. Let your dev team know and say, hey, listen, I got an error message from Google. Can you take a look at it? It's pretty straightforward. But you should at least once a month or so, take a look at the dashboards. See how you're doing. You can do year over year comparisons, for example, things like that. So it's pretty handy to see if any of the improvements that you've done to your website are paying off for you. Sometimes over the life cycle, you might decide to redo your website. If you want to make sure that it's working for you, uh, or you might hire an SEO person. You want to kind of make sure they're doing a good job for you. That's going to tell you. This is really the best information there is for organic search results. Andre, can you talk a little about what's considered a good click-through rate? That's a question from James in our audience. Mm. Uh, generally, you know, 2%, 2 to 6%. Um, it varies. Uh, so for example, if it's for your company name, it could be anywhere from 25 to 36%. I mean, a lot of times people don't type in their domain. They're going to just type in 
roughly the name of your shop and just go to whatever Google search results display. So those tend to have a much higher click to rate. But if you have other search terms that are what we call non-branded, it could be like car battery near me. Well, that one may not have as high a click to rate and the click to rate is really dependent on how high you appear in search results. So if you're number one, your average click through rate is going to be anywhere from 28 to 36%. If your number two drops like 18% and it goes less and less. And if you're ranked number 10, you're gonna get maybe a 1% click through rate. So that organic position makes a big, big difference. Awesome, thanks. All right. So now with Search Council in place, you can find out what keywords they're using to find your website. But the next portion of this presentation is going to talk about, okay, they're on your website. Now what? What are they doing on your website? This is going to tell you that. And this is going to tell you quite a bit about your audience themselves. It's pretty, this is um, pretty cool stuff. Um, at least I think it is anyways, but we'll geek out on this for a second. Let's take a look. So what I'm going to cover is going to really give you a quick introduction to what Google Analytics is. Uh, as well as we're gonna take a look at the interface itself. We'll look at some basic reports that can help you make some business decisions moving ahead. So why would you wanna get some digital analytics? Well, first of all, it can collect and analyze a lot of data for you. It really helps uh, to make your marketing efforts far more fruitful. So for example, if you're doing any paid search ads, maybe you're doing some Yelp ads, things like that, you can actually measure the performance of those through your Google Analytics. So it's really worthwhile for that. You can also analyze um, uh, where they're coming from with the sales data. You know, are customers in a particular part of the city better for you than others? Things like that. You can get insights into that. Uh, so great information can be gathered from that. You can also understand if there's any roadblocks on your website. So what I mean by that is that Let's say you've got um, a page for booking service appointments. Well, if you see that maybe your, your checkout process for booking an appointment is two or three pages, that everybody's leaving for some reason on the second page of that, you might want to check, is there something wrong with that form? Why are they not completing the process? You can actually kind of figure out, sleuth out where some potential issues are, uh, at least to start discussing uh, if there are you know, some remedies for that. All right, so how does it work? Well, it's pretty straightforward actually, is the analytics, Google tracks every website. So what you need to know is that whether you have analytics on your website or not, it's tracking it. It's measuring a whole bunch of metrics uh, to determine your organic rankings. So it has all that data. Adding Google ad Analytics simply gives you access to that information. So let me show you how this works. So basically, you're going to add a, a small script of code to the back end of your website so that basically Google knows where to send that data to which account to marry it up to. The next step is basically compile, sort, filters, and report all of that data into your Google Analytics platform where you can see that data. Because, yeah, it's great. Google has it, but now you get to see it. So you can kind of see what they're seeing. All right, let's walk through the setup. As I mentioned earlier, when you're setting up Google Analytics, you gotta have a Gmail account. So as always, uh, sign up for an account, gives you lots of extra benefits. Again, there's no cost to setting up a Google Analytics account. So let's go through this particular process. Now this one seems like, oh my God, this is terrible. This is just the typical permissions. Do you give them permission to send you emails for Google products, for benchmarking, technical. So a lot of checks, really quick. Um, so pretty straightforward. The only input you have to do for this first part, is just put the name of what you'd like to call your Google account. Your, you can call it your shop name, whatever it is. So it's pretty straightforward. So that way uh, it's nice and clean and straightforward. Next, the next question is gonna ask you, what do you wanna measure? Well, in most cases it's gonna be a website, but if you're, uh, some companies may have web apps, for example, you might wanna track that. It'll track that too. And if you have both and they talk to each other, you can track that as well. Most of the times, the default, the web is gonna be your first choice. 
And now we get a little deeper into it. Let's do a look at the property setup. So the website name, this is your specific name. So it could be your shop name, whatever it is. And next you're going to enter the website URL. Now there's a little drop down right here. And um, you have the option of putting the HTTP or HTTPS. All that means is, is that when you set up your domain that the data is encrypted. So it, it'll say, there'll be a little lock icon on your, on your website. The best, oh, the best approach is to simply copy paste your current URL uh, from your website in here. You'll see if it's HTTP or HTTPS, select the corresponding one, then delete the HTTP that you copy pasted here. Next is just asking what kind of industry. You'll ideally select automotive, uh, something like that here, pretty straightforward. Obviously, I think most of us are in the United States here. Click on that. And next, select your time zone. Hey, Andre, uh, this quick, yes. quick question for me, I just because I kind of missed this. When you, you said copy and paste your website URL, so go to your website, copy it from the browser menu bar into here, and it will say for you HTTP or HTTPS? Yes. However, it doesn't want that information. It wants you to select here, but it'll show you which one you have. So okay. once you know... You Would can you pick it and then delete. Those. Yeah, then delete the extra characters because it'll replicate it. That way you, you've got exactly uh, the correct setup. Okay. And make sure to select your correct time zone. Whatever part of the US you're in, do select your, you can't change this afterwards. So if you leave it LA and you're in, uh, in East Coast time, unfortunately the data, I mean, it's not gonna be a big deal, but it'll, you can't change this ever again. So it, it defaults to that all the time after that. So make sure to pick that correctly. And let's go to the next one. Now this seems really intimidating, uh, kind of is, but kind of it isn't because again, if you have a developer, all you need to do is copy paste this bit of code, email it to them, tell them to add it to your website. Uh, and they, uh, with these particular instructions, uh, and it'll take care of it. You can also add this particular JavaScript through Google Tag Manager if you already have that installed. Um, so again, I, that's a whole different topic, but fundamentally send this code to whoever is your webmaster or your developer uh, for implementation. They do have some specific steps, just follow those. Again, most web developers uh, nowadays will know exactly how to, how to do that. If they don't and have a very confused look uh, on their eyes, you might want to change web developers. Honestly, you should probably should. If they've never heard of this, I'm not sure where they've been. <laughs> Honestly, I'd be like, I'd be afraid. Andre, these days, you know, a lot of people are making their own websites. Is this something that they could do by themselves, or if it will it still work if they can't do this? It will. Now, here's the good news: if you use Wix or Squarespace or even like. Uh, uh, Google has uh, its own website. Most of the domains have a place where you can do a code insertion. Just look for that. And so it'll guide you through. So thankfully, they've made it fairly seamless, even if you are, you're right, that's a good point. Thank you that a lot of people do it yourself. Um, and that might be some good questions. If you're not quite sure on future calls, if you want to kind of just ping them or later on, um, what type of like WordPress, I've worked with Squarespace, I've worked with Wix. All of them have a feature where you can add your analytics code uh, quite simply. Thank God, they've made it a little bit easier. Thank you. Um, and we had a question in our, uh, that came up earlier, I was kind of looking for the right opportunity to talk about. Somebody mentioned that they have a Facebook page, but they don't have a website. Um, this doesn't, this, that can't be associated with Google, right? Right, that, yeah. Facebook has its own tracking metrics. Uh, and so unfortunately the two are not connected. In any but you, way, shape, you still can show up well in, in searches. Um, yes. This won't you be won't. a tool that you could use. Exactly. It just, yes, you're right. You, you could show up in search results, uh, but unfortunately you won't be, you won't have access to any of the backend data in terms of how you're doing, how people are finding you or what they're doing once they visit your website. Can, you know, can we ask that poll question now? Would we have a poll prepared with just a few short questions you'd like to ask. One of them is, do you have a website? Could, uh, could we put that up now? And if you're on the call, would you mind answering the few questions there? John, can you pop that up? Sorry, I meant to do this earlier. 
but it does tie into this. And if you're interested in hearing more about how you can build your own website using Google's tool for that, um, put that in the Q&A because we could put together some um, supplemental video for this or, or probably find one online that you could use. Um, can we pop that question, that poll up now? Sorry, I should have given you more warning about that. That's great. Do I just click on launch poll? Is that? There it is. Like okay. that. Oh, okay. How many of you have searched for something and either typed in near me in the search or had something had that pop up automatically? How many of you have a website and do you watch and monitor your online reviews? Just a few more seconds to answer that. All right, let's, uh, we're slowed down. So just let's go ahead and keep going. It looks like everybody has searched. Um, two out of three have a website and two out of three are responding to reviews. So awesome. Thanks cool. very much. Thank you. All right, moving on through the Google Tag Manager community. So once you have successfully uh, added that JavaScript to your website yourself or your developer, you can you should always check it uh, right away. And there are some quick ways to do that. At the very top of the profile, there's real-time reviews. If you click Overview, it's going to show your current traffic right this minute how many visitors on your site at that very instant. So if you're seeing there's zero traffic whatsoever, um, you may not have it configured correctly, but let it run for about a half an hour uh, or so and see if you get any data. Uh, but the moment, in fact, if you visit your own website, it should pick that up. So it's a quick way to test it. So uh, once you have that running, go to your website on your, on your cell phone or smartphone or website, or a browser or desktop, whatever, and you should see that you are paying your traffic. It should at least account for one visitor, for sure. All right, now that you've got the analytics set up, I'm gonna take a look now um, at what all this lovely data means. So by default, you're gonna land on homepage, which is gonna look like this. It has just an overall summary of um, how many users, have visited your website in say the last week or month, whatever defaults to, how many of those are new? How long they're spending on the website? And if you have an e-commerce site, you might be tracking goals and how much revenue they've earned. Uh, and also down below here, you're gonna see how many view, uh, viewers in the last 30 minutes or so. So it gives you some pretty quick insights. Let's take a look a little deeper. So in terms of when you navigate, you're already fundamentally navigating through the green highlighted menu. They've categorized all the information and all the reports uh, fairly easy and quite intuitive overall. Um, and so let's take a look at some of the filtering and date features for these reports. So first of all, each of the buckets has an overview. So you can kind of quickly see the landscape or give chart over a given time frame. And you can control that time frame right here. So right now we're looking at the last 28 days for given websites traffic. You can change that to whatever you like. You can have it last 90 days. You can have it the last, if you've had a profile for five years or 10 or 20 or 15, it can still all be there. It's storing it forever. So you have long-term access to that information. You can also share that information. So if you're interested in, and maybe you've got a business partner you want to show their performance, you can share that information with these particular clicks right up here. Additionally, you can do some comparisons. Uh, that's also kind of handy. This either you can set it up as month or for month comparison. You know, perhaps you're gauging how your month of April was compared to March. You can do a direct comparison, see if things are getting better or worse, uh, or you can do year over year. I can pretty much guarantee that everybody is going to have better year over year data uh, than last year. In fact, for many of our clients, we've had to change our reporting metrics. We generally uh, measure year over year, but unfortunately last year was just such a disaster for everybody uh, that I think without exception, we can clearly say that uh, best to go with month over month impressions for the next 12 months or so. 
Andre, what would be the All benefit right. of, of knowing this information, like knowing when people are searching, if there is a time of month when they're searching more frequently, for instance? Well, it's good to know because let's say if you're a restaurant, for example, well, you guys are in a restaurant, but I'll use that analogy, is that, and if you see there's a higher volume of searches on Fridays, you might want to spend more uh, paid search during that time or less if you're too busy, for example. So you kind of want to know when your peaks and valleys are. You're seeing here that these are the dips are typically weekends, that there's less searches on weekends for most services. Uh, so you can kind of gauge um, anything from paid search campaigns or even for staffing levels, uh, things like that. So it can help uh, measure some, uh, some not directly related business information as to when your busiest times are, things like that. So a lot of rich data in there. Thanks. All right, let's take a look at a little deeper. Each of these particular buckets, whether it's acquisition, there's an overview, and then some of the reports have deeper insights. In this case here, acquisition has a, uh, a full report on user acquisition. And what it does, it still gives you a very similar chart, but now it gives you everything from tables that compare where your traffic's coming from, the actual numbers, number of users, how many sessions. Sessions are basically how many pages they visited during the time they visited, uh, things like that. Oops, sorry. Um, so it's really valuable information. So some things to look for here um, for you want to always have a good number of new users, ideally, uh, and also look where the um, traffic is coming from. If you're doing paid search, you'll also see paid search ads. You might see some referral traffic from social media, things like that. Even email will be tracked here. So you'll see that particular performance on here. This particular business just does organic referral, no paid. So it doesn't display those at all. Uh, so some pretty good insights can be gathered from that as well as traffic acquisition. So all those will give you lots of information. We're gonna take a look at that a little bit deeper in, uh, in a moment, this is just to have, give an understanding of how to navigate your way around the particular menus. The next one for acquisition. So I mentioned just quickly that you can use it to check the user acquisition overview, where they're coming from um, and how often as all located here. So they organize everything in buckets. So the life cycle buckets. So basically um, the number of users, where's the, where they're coming from, how often, how long do they stay on the website? Are they buying through your e-commerce? Are they coming back? These are all the life cycle for your clients' information. The next one is, uh, as part of that, is the engagement metrics. So this is all about how long they're staying on the website. Now, this is an important metric, really good to look at. If you're seeing these numbers drop off really, really quickly, you gotta be careful because generally speaking, if Google sees that uh, people only visited less than 10 seconds and didn't visit any other pages, they will consider that a bounce. That's a negative ranking signal. So they're kind of saying, oh, they didn't like what they found and bailed. Not a good thing to happen. So you want to have that engagement a little bit longer and ideally that they click at least another page or, or, or do something else on the website to show say, uh, a signal to Google that you've got a good web page, that it's interesting and engaging and, and helpful for the general public. Within the same report, it's also going to tell you which pages they visited and also uh, what con what was their screen resolution, which can help you dive, were they on mobile or desktop, things like that. The next one is monetization. So if you have an e-commerce website, it's going to tell you and uh, show you how well you're doing financially in terms of performance here. This is not an e-commerce client, so there is no data here. And next one is retention. So this is how many users, how many are returning users and how often they return over and over again. The next group is for users. This gives you the demographics of what countries are coming from, what cities. So if you look at the bottom right, what cities they're coming from. So this is great information if you're doing um, any paid search or traditional advertising and you're trying to decide where most of your customers are coming from, it can help uh, you decide whether it's a good fit to um, get some traffic from, or say, do a bus bench or something like that. 
and also tell you the demographic details are they male, female, average ages, things like that are also available. Last one, this is a pretty good one for tech. Uh, this screen tells you, uh, are they coming on a mobile device? Are they coming from a desktop? You can see that here. So you can see that this particular business still gets the majority of their visitors on, on, on a desktop device, followed by mobile searches. So again, this is good considerations. If you're thinking about ever redoing your website, you should look at this. Uh, so if you see that the majority of your traffic is on mobile devices, you should spend more time on the creative and design for how it looks and how the experience is for mobile users rather than desktop. So it's good insights into the direction. The operating systems are also good. A lot of Mac users coming to this website. Look at that, Macintosh, iOS, Windows, Android, Linux, Chrome, and OS2. So sometimes, uh, Developers creating new websites will say, oh, you need to have it compatible with all sorts of devices. You go back to them and say, well, actually, you know, if we hit these first four, we're good. And you're right. You know, do you really need to have your site designed so it's compatible with Linux for those 19 users? Probably not. So it's good to know. That's what that particular section is going to tell you. The last one is events. The events you've got to use with caution, however. This is really a little bit more advanced, but it will help uh, determine what kind of interactions are happening with your users and your website. So you could use it, for example, let's say if you have just a really simple website, you've got one page. Well, it's going to be hard to create um, another click through it because there's nothing else to do. But you can create things like a page view here, where if they scroll down three quarters of the way, you could tell Google, hey, that counts as an interaction. And so that can help improve or uh, get rid of that high bounce rate, things like that, because there's an interaction with the website. So there's ways to uh, communicate with Google using this information. It can also give you some insights in terms of, are they clicking to book appointments? Uh, you know, and remember I mentioned earlier, you know, as you go through that sales funnel, the pages are going through the checkout, it'll help you determine where the leads leaving the page uh, specifically. So uh, it can provide some pretty good information. Again, it's kind of an advanced topic. So I would recommend getting some advice on uh, how to configure this specifically. All right, so at this point, we can open up four questions or we can dive right into the uh, live demo so we can look at those reports a little bit deeper. We do have a few more questions I was going to ask at the end. Let me ask one of them. Um, did So Google period, how, basically the question is, how long does verification last? That's a, a good question. Uh, basically, uh, it does check it periodically. Uh, so as long as it's always there, it's good forever. However, it's quite often it'll break when you redesign your website and you forget to put that verification tag back on, uh, then it'll drop off. Um, so it's good to just periodically just kind of check your uh, Google search console. If you see no data coming in, uh, check that tag. Could mean it got deleted or removed accidentally. Okay. And when will they start seeing data? Uh, generally, between 24 to 48 hours, they should see data for uh, Google search console. And that one backdates up to 16 months. Google Analytics only tracks forward. So it doesn't give you historical data. So that means it's only going to start um after that fact and the tracking pretty much begins right away so you'll see the next day you're going to start seeing data in those reports you can check real time for at the moment uh data uh but by the next day you'll have actual group uh, data to, on your reports okay cool let's go through the demo and all right So I've queued up both. So we're gonna take a look, a look at the search count pro uh, property first. And I mentioned that performance is probably uh, everybody's favorite place to look at because it can tell you how you're performing over any given length of time. So in this case, I'm looking at the last three months. And if I expand that to the last 16 months, um, you can see the impact that COVID-19 has. So here, this particular company, you can see the time frame of February, March. And this, we saw historically pretty much every business had this huge downturn uh, impact them. 
except certain types of industries. And that was restaurants. Restaurants, actually, if they were well optimized, took off like a rocket typically uh, because everybody started going online ordering. So those some restaurants did very, very well. So you can see here that you know, they had the downturn during uh, last year and have since now are on the road to recovery. The purple line is how often they appeared in search results and the total clicks, how often uh, people visit their website. So pretty steady growth for the particular client here. You can also drill down, but this is an interesting feature. So if you want to find out what pages are being visited the most, it'll give you a list and it'll track up to a thousand pages, but I'm going to zoom in here a little bit. That's a little small. So you can see here this particular business, the homepage, and then how to rent, camera lenses, product. It'll tell you which pages get the most clicks and impressions. You can tell um, which uh, pages are most valuable. And here's where you find out what search terms they're typing in, in Google to find your website. So company name, of course, tends to be the number one. If, so here's a tip. If you're not number one for your own company name, you really need that SEO help. You should be, this should always be your number one uh, source of traffic. So and you can see would you here, recommend everybody go online, you can do it as soon as we're done here and Google your business's name. Yes. And if you're not absolutely number one or on the first page, you have a very big problem. Uh, so you want to make sure you've got that utmost visibility. Uh, that's really important. So if you're not seeing it, I'd encourage you to go back. I think we've got the recorded webinar from Google One Business, which we did uh, last week, right? Come on, last Thursday. That's correct. Yeah. Is, is that available now? Um, yes, you should. Anybody that registered for this should have a, a link to to that. If you if you don't, um, just put that in the Q and A or let us know in the follow up survey. We'll make sure you get that. Yeah, and also if you're not seeing that, do join us on our. Next uh, some specific tips for what to do with your website to improve that visibility. Uh, so we can kind of get into the weeds a little bit there in terms of getting some actionable insights uh, Actually, to help improve your visibility. Let me say the best way to, to do that is to go to interstatebatteries.com slash pro clinic. If you want to attend last week's workshop on Google My Business uh, or next week's, uh, but you can interstatebatteries.com slash Pro Clinic, and by registering for these or, or the future ones, you'll, you'll you'll get notifications when we have, for instance, our May Pro Clinic on electrical troubleshooting. A little plug for that. All right, sounds good. Here's some additional insights. So remember, I talked what kind of device. It also tells you that's here. Uh, this business, most of their clients are visiting from uh, desktop. Followed closely on mobile devices. So clearly, you'd want to make the experience on both websites equally good. Um, and here's another one. Remember our, earlier I was showing that there's some search feed like the people also ask and there were some videos. Well, Google will tell you how often you appear for those as well. So you can see here, this particular business appears for videos and it'll tell you so if you're wondering, okay, what page that came from, it will tell you which page and what video is getting some visitors. So it can help you determine, okay, that con is that content working for you or not? So it's got some pretty good insights uh, that you should definitely take a look at once a month. Additionally, once a month, you want to look at the um, page experience. This is brand new, just released today from Google. This is going to become very, very important in the near future. Um, and what you want to check for at a glance, make sure these are all checked off. Uh, if anything shows up here, it does mean that your visibility is, will likely take a hit this coming May. So you wanna make sure that you are in good shape here as much as possible. So again, if you see any core, what they mean by core web vitals, remember earlier was saying, look at the reports in terms, do you have any, is the site load slowly? Uh, does it shift around uh, by shifting? I mean, do you ever go to like news websites and notorious for that, where you're reading an article and then some ad lows and all of a sudden where you were reading just shift in. It's, that's, they're, they're penalizing or will be penalizing websites that do that. So you can expect some better reading if you read your news online this Good, coming month. That. 
Yeah, I know everybody hates that. We're like, thank you, Google. They're going to now ding those websites, uh, but also means they're, they're going to dig everybody else in the same platform too. So you want to make sure you don't have any issues like that. So do take a look at your core web vitals and it's going to flag any particular issues. Now, this client's in good shape for mobile, no, no issues reported, but they do have some desktop issues. So if you're like, oh, what, what are the issues here? You can click open report and it's going to flag the particular pages. Uh, and what the issues are. So here they're saying, hey, the website's taking more than two and a half seconds to load. There's 261 pages like that. And it gives you deeper insights you can kind of look into. Okay, give me some examples, more examples of those pages, and you can keep drilling down more and more. So it gets super, super, super technical. Uh, but if you want to geek out, I encourage you to do so. And what's nice is that Google does provide descriptions of what they mean by all this. So if you're not quite sure, they do put some pretty good information throughout the website. Uh, so it is pretty useful, but I would encourage most of all, focus on your performance. And also, are you seeing any core web vital issues? You wanna fix those. And again, remember earlier, I also mentioned, make sure to check that you've got lots of valid pages. This client has no error, so they're in great shape. Um, they've got 100% visibility for all their pages. So you never want to see where lots of red here means that you've created pages that Google's not going to index and it's not going to display in search results. It just doesn't like them. So I want to make sure you get those fixed up. So this information is really critical to making informed decisions for how to improve your website and how to, um, and which ways you can improve to attract more visitors. So it's the first step because without the reporting, you won't know whether your efforts are working or making things worse. And that was a lot. I'm sure you guys are probably dizzy by all this information overload. Thankfully it is recorded, so we'll come back to that. The last bit was Google Analytics. And this is telling you what people are doing on your website. This is a look at the full dashboard, a ton of information on here. I find the most interesting one is to look at the acquisition channel. This gives you where are the visitors coming from? Are they coming from organic? Are they coming from paid? It tells you all that right here. So this, if you have a client that's doing a lot of paid search, I'm gonna switch accounts here. We'll look at, so we look at interstate batteries, do two, do you guys mind if I take a look at Interstate? It's not my this call, but I don't see anybody <laughs> here who can make the call. So. Okay. So this is an interesting one because um, there's going to be multiple sources of traffic coming in from uh, Interstate's traffic. Now, they've got a slightly older platform, but we'll still get some really excellent uh, data in terms of nice pie charts going to tell us exactly where all the traffic is coming from. So number one source, organic then paid search, then display, then direct and referral. So pretty good mix of all sorts of ways to get website visitors there from the analytics account. So um, most of you will be creating a new profile. So you'll get by default the newest and latest uh, look from Google rather than uh, some of these older profiles. These will, I guess eventually it's optional, but eventually you can update these profiles to get the latest previews of data and information. All right. So what would you say are the top things people can do to improve um, you know, the, the experience and the search results to their site? One of the most is look at your engagement. There are some really important metrics in here uh, in terms of what you want to specifically look at. How long are they spending on your website? If you see everything less than 10 seconds, you probably have a problem. They're not really happy with their website. They're not sticking around. That's not a good sign. Now, however, if you see a high, like a low engagement on your contact us page, that might be okay because maybe they're just looking for a phone number. They're satisfied. But on your home page and maybe about your services, they should spend at least 20 or 30 seconds there. So that would be an indication that maybe you need to work on the site content just a little bit. Um, to boost that up uh, certainly would be beneficial. Uh, like, they talk about that in terms of stickiness to the website. What would you do on your site content? Well, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Some of the things you could do in terms of people want reassurance that they're making a good decision. So chances are if the content or the engagement is very, very low, you didn't really fulfill uh, or answer their questions fully. So for example, if they're looking and they want to find out whether you service a particular 
type of car, maybe they have an import and you service imports. Well, you'd want to make sure you mention that in your content of your website. Like we service Toyotas, Hondas, and, you know, add all the types that you do service or also expand that we have, you know, certified technicians with these particular makes and models and things like that. So that would go a long way to, the, because they're going to read that. So they're going to have longer engagement and you're also providing a lot of reassurance uh, with them. So you want to just be, um, provide as many details as possible about your business, what you do service, and even what you don't service, certainly. So that way they can come and say, yep, this is the right place for me, call you. Because I'm sure you don't want to get the phone calls where it's like, maybe you don't do imports. And you're like, oh, hey, do you service uh, Toyota? No, we don't. Like It will avoid fielding a lot of unnecessary calls as well. So, um, Or, you know, do you sell tires? Do you install batteries? Those kind of things. You want to call that out because, again, uh, it does mean you get additional business if they don't know about it. One, you're not going to appear in search yourself. Number two, they're certainly not going to go to your business because you didn't say you do that. People don't aren't comfortable calling nowadays. They're just like, well, is it on their website? If it's not, I'm not going to go there. It's pretty straightforward. We have a very simple line. Must be present to win. So if you don't have it on your website or if you don't appear in search results, you don't get the business. Yeah, and a lot of that's covered in last week's uh, Pro Clinic too, so... Yeah, and more on that this coming uh, Thursday as well. Cool. Um, we have a question that I want to make sure we get covered. We only have a few minutes left, and somebody wrote that they lost their site owner. And I actually know this, uh, the shop that I go to, so they, they had somebody build the site, and now they've lost contact with them, and uh, they, they don't know what to do with their site. Yeah, that happens a lot. So a couple of things. So if you've lost access to... The, Google Search Console or Google Analytics, uh, you can retrieve it. You can create a new verification tag. You follow the same steps um, and it'll basically, you'll lose part of the past data, but at least you'll be able to see new data and new information. If, however, your webmaster has moved out of the country or he's just, I don't know, whatever, you can't get a hold of your website, you can check with your whoever's hosting your company. And if you don't know who's hosting it, you can find out. Uh, there's some tools uh, on the internet. You can just Google it. Um, I would recommend um, do uh, who is, is a search you can do, who is lookup. And you can type in your domain. So if you go to any of these, this I can lookup will tell you where your website's hosted. So even if you don't know, it's gonna tell you it's GoDaddy and here's a contact then contact that hosting company and say, hey, listen, so-and-so, they, they're going to have a lot of verification and steps to verify your information, but ultimately you will able to reclaim and get control of your website again. Cool. Awesome. That's, that's the questions we have, and that's just about all the time we have. Did you have anything else for us, Andre? No, that's all. That was probably way too much information for uh, a, an afternoon. <laughs> Well, uh, again, it's going to be recorded. You should have a link to it. If, um, if you need anything, you can put that in the Q&A now, or you can respond to our survey. And um, we do appreciate your joining us today. Please come back Thursday for, for our final installment of the digital series. And you can always go to interstatebatteries.com slash proclinics. Um, most of our webinars are on more on the battery and electrical side, um, but uh, we do have a pretty rounded um, curriculum, I guess, you know, what? so check that out and you'll always get uh, notifications and we have new pro clinics coming up. But Andre, thank you again for taking us through this. Um, you know, Interstate wants to have a measurable impact on our customers' business and this is just one way we do it. So we appreciate you taking us through it. My pleasure. Take care, everybody. Thanks.